Uh, I would like to talk about vomit, among other things. Um, but my, I've got so many puke stories, honey. <laughs> I really want to talk about body image. I thought I would begin by telling my um, sort of negative experience of mm. that. Mm. So, when I was about 14, I started puking after meals. Now, my stomach muscles were strong enough so that I could contract them and push the food out of my stomach into the toilet without having to use my fingers to stimulate um, vomiting. And I did this for about a year, infrequently, but you know, still to the point where I realized it certainly wasn't a healthy practice. Told my parents when I was 15 that I thought I was bulimic. Uh, they didn't believe me. Um, I think it's probably a hard thing to hear for anybody so that their, their child is sick like that. Not to mention the fact that I, I am kind of a drama queen and so maybe they told themselves I was seeking attention um, by, by saying it. And I was, but just happened to be true. So, so I continued throwing up and then, you know, it became, became something that I did very regularly after almost every meal. Um, it was initially something that made it so that I could eat what I wanted and didn't have to suffer the, the consequences of fatness or, or whatever. Um, and, and then it becomes, became something more, it became something like any addiction, like the secret thing in which I engaged that was mine, something that was dark and helped to perhaps actualize darker feelings inside of me um, in a behavior that I knew to be negative but took pleasure in. Um, that's probably another discussion, but, but really, after having puked so much, after having gone through some intense things, going to a clinic eventually, and, you know, doing a lot of work toward healing that behavior, I still find this intense judgment, you know, the, the very same judgment that in part impelled me to, um, make myself throw up after eating, um, but just this, this need to, to be something, I don't know exactly how to describe it except that, like, like the other day after we did, you know, a little camera shoot, and we look back at it and we're, we're, you know, realizing how great it was. And the first thing that pops into my head is, God, I could lose five pounds. And it just, you know, and I, I see this happen with women and, and men, more women than men, all the time. I see this, this discomfort with where they are, this, this attempt at being something else, at being something more beautiful and, and you know, skinny is... Uh, part of this social image we have of beauty. So, with all of that there, you know, feeling insecure about food and um, and my my body and and feeling beautiful most of the time, but having this simultaneous battle with myself when I pass a mirror, that is always that little voice in my head, like. You've got to do this, or you'd be more beautiful if, um, you know, just a lack of acceptance. And what I'd like to do is, is to somehow rid myself, you know, of that struggle, of that torture that's constantly there. That, you know, that I, first of all, walk by a mirror and I'm, I'm always checking to see how I look. Um, just 
I would love to find a place where I just feel comfortable, where I don't always feel like I have to change or improve anything. Um, and even if that's momentary, I would like those moments to be more frequent. Um, I also I also know that this is an experience many people have, like I said, and and hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping that there's a, I, I hate to say a cure, but a process through which someone can travel to help ameliorate those intense feelings of judgment and lack of self-worth that are associated with body image. Now, there are things I've done that have been very, very helpful, but um, I seem to have this crazy idea that it can be better. And I want to talk to you about how. <laughs> well, it can be. <clears throat> It's interesting that, I mean, there's so many aspects to this, and one of them is that there's so much pressure in this culture to be better, but the focus of better is usually on the superficial. It's not on being a better person or being, having, you know, developing your be best or better qualities. It's on the superficial, and having watched this in this country for. for 18 years, one of the things I'm absolutely clear about is that firstly we're in an uber uh, consumer culture. I mean, every culture consumes, uh, but this culture consumes you with the need to consume. And one of the things, so, so what happens is that the best way to get people to consume is to keep them off balance keep them scared, keep them dissatisfied, keep them putting themselves down and then sell stuff with the line, you'll be better, mm -hmm. you'll be happier, you'll <clears throat> be more loved. Body image, culture of consumerism, 14 is a formative age, teenager dumb in the United States, bulimia, what does it mean to puke, to have to regurgitate things? I'd like, if you're willing, to talk about the culture of consumerism and how it might inform all of those other things. America prides itself on being a consumer capitalist culture and scorns the socialist countries like you know, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and all of Europe and a bunch of others. <clears throat> um, and has this self-image of independence and you know go it alone for example the problem the problem with that is that in that in a consumer society it's at least an extreme one by definition to be a good consumer gets equated with being a good person and a good citizen and a successful person and to be a good consumer you have to have a lot of money so then in order to feel value, valued and valuable, people feel driven to work more and more and more to, or, you know, or, or to find shady ways too of making more money, to buy more stuff, to feel more valuable, and, and especially in terms of the bulimia, to fill the emptiness inside, yeah? To, fill, to try and fill that hole that can't be filled by stuff. It can only be filled by the things that you said earlier that you're seeking, which is more self-acceptance. And I translate that as more, also as more self-love, judging yourself to be fine, where you are, who you are, on your journey of growth and perfection. Yeah. So, uh, the next, so that next step is earn lots of money. And in the process, what gets lost is uh, growing yourself as a human. What gets lost is any human qualities, behaviors, and activities that don't generate money. So, for example, in America, we see the only advanced country in the world that only has two weeks holiday a year, 
where every other advanced country has four to six holidays fully paid. And I read recently a statistic that 50% of Americans don't take that two weeks either because they need, they need more money or because they're afraid that when they come back to work, they won't have a job. So you've got, even if people take that two weeks, and I'm talking about, I mean, I had a friend in Washington who was a, just very, very, not just a senior executive, but a partner in a major uh, PR firm there making a huge amount of money and still couldn't take more than two weeks holidays, which I just found mind blowing. That then points to another problem in American culture, which is people have forgotten how to have leisure time and forgotten how to play. In other words, activities with no point that are fun, I would define as play. And this is not a playful country by any stretch of the imagination. Everything's very serious and goal directed and success directed and money directed. So you can buy more crap. Yeah. So in the process, money becomes the one true God of America over being a good person or being having a quality life. So, you know, so often I've seen the ridiculous situation where in a family, both parents are working their butts off. And I say to them, why do you work so hard? And they say to give our kids a good life. And it never occurs to them. And what they mean is send them to the best schools or buy them more stuff, you know, designer clothes or whatever it is. Um, and, and it just doesn't occur to them that a good life for kids is a life spent with good, loving, high quality parents. Yeah. So, the, so consumerism corrupts humanity. And I've said many times in this country, this is a, not a good country for humans being. It's a good country for humans consuming. It's a good country for humans working, but not being in terms of being quality humans. Now, I'm not saying people don't transcend that or defy that or somehow find a way around it and develop themselves. I also see that to, to a degree that is not the public culture at all. Yeah. So where do you think this stems from? I mean, how, how is it that something like that developed? And I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to make generalizations. Totally. I think. Totally. Um, because there are certainly exceptions that you always, know, exist always. all over the place. Yes. Um, and I also, you know, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I look at like China and the Chinese paradigm and, you know, there's, I just was reading an article this morning and, you know, they were talking about how most people in China don't get any time off. Right. And, and it's a, it's a culture of work and drive, although there are different values motivating a lot of that, which include honor and, you know. And not starving. Right. I mean, you can't compare as... In the sense of development, uh, China is not an advanced country. It's not one of the what we would call economically advanced countries. It's quickly catching up. But it's only 20, 30 years ago that China eradicated famine in, in the country. Um, so uh, still a huge amount of people in China, as in other countries in the world, uh, um, their, their work struggle is to survive. Yeah. Part of the problem here is, you know, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that when you get all your physical needs met, the thing at the top is spirituality or, you know, personal growth. And, and it's almost like here, the top of the pyramid's been cut off, uh -huh. where, where people get, you know, it's like when they've got everything they need in the material world, then they want more or better of it. So they've got you know, a nice Ford, then they want a nice, you know, Mercedes. Not because of the quality of the car, but because it gives them more status or it gives them, you know, feeling good about themselves. That's the difference that I see. So, so again, where, where do you see that um, as having started? Big question.